everybody, this is Lewis Jefferson coming to you from the Dirty Beaker. I'm coming to you today because I felt it was important to get the message across without maybe posting a, a sign or posting some information below. I thought that a conversation would be uh, more relevant and be able to be absorbed by the people better. So I, I said I would uh, take this opportunity to, to say a few things. Uh, the things that are on my mind today are regarding D3 and some other disturbing news that we found as far as a new receptor outside of the angiotensin II receptor uh, on pneumocytes uh, for the COVID-19 virus. Um, so it, it, we have some disturbing news, but we also have some good news as far as prevention. And I think I'll start with the, the bad news or disturbing news first, and then I'll go into you know how we can prevent that. So first of all, uh, in, through peer review articles that we've been reviewing, we have uh, recognized that there's another very vital entry point of COVID-19 outside of the angiotensin II receptor that is uh, found on the kidney, found on the, the small intestines, the large intestines, as well as, uh, of course, uh, pneumocytes. Um, but in this case, the, the entry point is CD147 receptor which is found on T cells and uh, it's found on other cells as well, but particularly T cells is very interesting because the entry point for HIV was also the CD147 receptor on T cells as well. And the difference between the two is that with HIV, the uh, HIV virus had an entry point of the CD147 receptor and then through reverse transcriptase and th through uh, integrase enzyme is able to enter into the DNA of the host. And in that case, it was the T cell, the CD4 T cell. As far as COVID-19 is concerned, it's a, a little bit less harmful, but it's still harmful. Uh, the the COVID-19 or SARS-2 enters through the CD147 receptor on T cells and particularly CD4 T cells, when it enters, it could begin to replicate and replicate and destroy the T cells. Now, the difference between HIV and, and uh, COVID-19 is that the DNA of, uh, of the host cell, the DNA of the host cell, of the T cell in this case, does not replicate itself to make more and more T cells with an HIV infection or more and more T cells with a COVID-19 infection. It does not do that. But what it does do is to uh, overwhelm the, the T cells and with replication and begin to explode the T cells so that your T cells become overwhelmed and, and explode. And so they aren't able to mount an immune response, the proper immune response that you will need to fight out the disease. And that is becoming very critical in, in fighting uh, COVID, and we find that disturbing, and we'll continue to watch that. The point that I want to make about D3 is a prevention point. It's not that it's the cure for the disease or anything like that, but it's an outstanding prevention point, and it's even more outstanding than what we originally thought. And I'll go into that a little bit. First, I'll go into the metabolism of, of vitamin D first to give you an idea of, of where I'm coming from. Okay, so we see we're out here in the sun, and the sun hits our skin. The sun hits our skin, and it activates a compound called 7-dehydroxycholesterol. Once it hits uh, seven, uh, the skin and creates 7-dehydroxycholesterol, that is converted to D3. Now, D3 is not ready to be able to utilize by your body for the purposes that your body needs it. It has to be further processed. It's further processed from D3 to, through the liver. So once it goes into circulation as D3, the D3 comes to the liver and the liver converts D3 to 25-hydroxy D3. Once the liver converts the D3 to 25-hydroxy D3, the 25-hydroxy D3 circulates through the system and goes to the kidneys. And then at the kidneys, the kidneys are able to further hydroxylate the 25-hydroxy-D3 uh, and make it 1-2-5-hydroxy-D3. 
and that way it is able to go to your bones and to your intestines to do all of the things that it needs to do for your body as far as creating a, a bone structure, strength, uh, absorption, and, and resorption, uh, as well as uh, keeping proper function of your parathyroid hormone. The other statement that I want to make about that is that now that we know the process, we always thought that the, the last place to be able to uh, process 25-hydroxy-D3 was at the kidney. But we have now discovered that it can be processed in the nasal mucosa, which is up your nose and the linings of your nose. And now why that is important is that when you're breathing in, you're walking out, and we're wearing these masks, and when you're wearing a mask, you're trying to prevent from any sort of aerosol virus or any other sort of contaminant from entering your nasal mucosa or your mucosa in general to get into your respiratory tract. So in order to prevent it from getting into your respiratory tract, your body has some methods of catching it before it gets deeper into your respiratory tract. We know that the, the lungs have cili ciliary that prevent that, but even upper in the upper nasal mucosa, uh, the mucous membranes um, stimulate all sorts of anti-allergens and antibacterial and antiviral compounds. The compound that we want to talk about today is called cathelicidin. Cathelicidin, think of Kathy. I know everybody knows of Kathy or Catherine. Think of cathelicidin. Cathelicidin is really the only independent antimicrobial that the, the body makes. And that's what makes it so exciting. When the sunlight hits your skin and it activates that process that I just informed you about, the nasal mucosa is also able to create 125 dehydroxy vitamin D3. And why that is important, because 125 hydroxy uh, D3 stimulates cathelicidin. And cathelicidin is a very, very potent antimicrobial that we make, and it could ward off the original virus when it hits the nasal mucosa and eliminate it before it's able to even enter a host cell and wreak havoc on your body. So to even enter a T cell or to even enter angiotensin II receptor cell. So I, I hope that everybody is, is getting the point here that getting outside, getting that sunlight, getting that vitamin D is very, very vital to the defense, to the prevention of this COVID thing. And I think I'm going to end it there. And if anyone has any questions about uh, any of the information I provided, please hit me up at uh, Messenger or you know Facebook, post something on there, or catch me at um, on IG at A-L-L-R-Q-S at IG. So, all right, everybody, be healthy and uh, keep masks up when you need to.